And who do you see as, you know, you identified Ed Lynch as a candidate you can support. Who do you see that's currently in Washington that uh, you think gets a passing grade and should and deserves to be reelected? Are there any people that you've identified? You know, John McCain, he has helped so much and is the face of health care. Um, and Sarah Palin, she is not in Washington right now, and she is a private citizen. And that's one thing we need to remember is that she is a private citizen, but she still has a voice, and it is hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're 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 into you know because John McCain has a lot of baggage you know John McCain cost uh, the Republican Party the election um, p- primarily because in my opinion he he suddenly is, you know this is my opinion and I was talking about this last night what ended up happening was they pulled the race card on John McCain and he fell for it he said I can't even attack this candidate because the perception will be I'm attacking him because he's the first half black candidate to ever get into the Democratic uh, you know to get the nomination from the Democratic Party and you took this guy who'd been so called maverick and a warrior even though I'm not a fan of John McCain because he's Mm -hmm. all wrong on amnesty but nonetheless you had this uh, person who by by all uh, measure, certainly was up to the job. I mean, he had the experience. He had a warrior spirit. He was in, you know, in Hanoi Hilton for many years, survived one of the most horrible experiences a human being could be subjected to, came back, continued to work for his country. So it should have been a no-brainer. But he was unable to uh, talk garner up the courage that it takes and what I see happening in Washington right now is very much the same thing. If it's not the race card, it's the uh, socioeconomic, you don't care, you're rich you don't care about the poor people card that gets pulled all the time. If we don't start electing candidates who say I don't have to defend my principles. Conservatism is proactive to relieve the pressures and the pains of the people in the middle class and the lower class, people who've been suffering racial discrimination or gender bias, which, by the way, is pretty moot at this point. There's no, no, there's no uh, place in America for those things, and we have legislated against them. You can't change people's hearts. If somebody's a bigot, they're a bigot. Uh, and believe me, bigots come in all colors, and bigots pick on whoever they think they can you know, pick on uh, right, right now. Uh, you know, for me, any kind of hate crime legislation, all the rest of this, it's a way of distracting the American people and making people like me feel bad Um, it doesn't work anymore I need candidates who this doesn't work on anymore and and that's why young people you have to understand what conservatism is let's take a break and we'll come back and I want your thumbnail what is conservatism? Because it, it, it's, it's not just a word. It's got right. to be a, a, a principle. It's got to be a series of strategies or it's ridiculous. We, you know, liberal conservative means nothing unless you know what it means. We welcome our special guest today, Connor Lancer. He is 14 years old and he is a self-defined, declared conservative in a sea of uh, liberal madness in a country which is being dominated at, in Washington, D.C., and even in the state of Florida at this point by politicians who we feel are selling his future uh, down the drain. And why would anybody your age even have an incentive to do well when you realize that uh, it's, sta- it's pretty much stacked against you? What inspires you? What are the principles of conservatism that you've been attracted to and that you want to tell other young people about? Well, the conservative movement is really growing right now, and I think the most important thing is that America needs to come back to the Constitution. It's definitely gone a ways away from the Constitution. It needs to come back. Um, How do you think that happened, though? Because it's people who who generate this kind of movement, and and in the past... um, they would pretend that it was constitutional, but uh, they would be challenged and things would be stopped. Now they're not even challenged. Right. Well, there's there's two things. Uh, The youth who were, are now adults, didn't care. They didn't get involved. And so now when they grow up and they go through college, which is mainly you have liberal professors, they just are told things and they take it in their brain and they don't think about it. And so now that's what shows how we have our most adults today making poor decisions because and they parenting. were never educated. And their parenting, uh, which is really more frightening, you know, that, that, that their kids think that throwing, you know, rubbing alcohol on another child and lighting them on fire is like acceptable behavior. He's not a monster. You know, I raise children. Uh, if a kid like a kid of mine, 
uh, you know, ever had that thought in their head, you know, I would declare them a monster. But we have a, a we have all this moral relativism out there where kids are not being told the difference between right and wrong. You say that your parents didn't try to indoctrinate you. So how'd you get started? I mean, what happened? One day you woke up, you looked at a headline on a newspaper. I mean, Sarah, Palin. Sarah Palin. Sarah um, Palin. I was actually in my fourth hour period, which is two hours long, in uh, seventh grade. And I looked up at the TV, and it says Sarah Palin announced as vice presidential nominee. And I'm looking, and I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on. She's young. She's pretty. And she's a woman? Wait a minute. And she's a Republican? I was kind of thinking, this this doesn't make sense. Um, and so I was just taking it, oh, she's stupid. She's this. She's that. And I started repeating it, and I caught myself, and I go, well, what am I saying here? This is not right. I don't even know anything about her. So I went on to the website and kind of read about her, and I'm like, wow, she, you know, she's really you know, intelligent, and I think she could really take our country back to the constitutional uh, values. And so there out, I started making a list of all of the things I believed in, and I went to the Democratic uh, Party website and look at their, looked at their planks and their platform. And I did the same with the Republican, and I found out that I agree more with Republicans. Um, but I am an American first, and that is the most important thing. I'm a conservative second, and I am a Republican third. Mm, very interesting. I like the way you put that. I um, I, I think it's it's a. Uh it's interesting because the opposite happened to the generation after you. They took a look at Sarah Palin and that gave them a reason to marginalize conservatives and they, they used that. And instead it awakened in you this desire to know more. Um, I, another thing I have, to, I have to thank Sarah Palin for. I, I will make sure to let her know that she awakened the sleeping giant in a uh, young man in South Florida because I think, that's re- I think you're absolutely right. I think that a, a thinking person had to look at that. For me, as a woman, I see Sarah Palin as everything I dreamed of when I was your age. She was exactly what I hoped could happen for America, that there could be somebody who was principled, who could manage to have a family and be a competent leader. And there she emerged, and all my friends who had believed that same thing with me back in the 60s and 70s were attacking her. And I was stunned, and it really just made me dig my heels in. Can you stay a little bit longer? I can. I know you got family coming in. He's got a life. And one day, when I can vote, I'll vote her for president, but until then, but until then, don't mess with Sarah, she's an angel sent from God, don't mess with Sarah, the children or taught, don't mess with Sarah, all you liberal media, don't mess with Sarah. 